716, welcome into Acadiana's Morning News. Winging it Wednesday. Already pretty raucous. It's uh, already this wild morning. in this room. Wild. Uh, you'd think we all had a cigarette and a 40-ounce uh-huh. beer in I'm here. I'm telling you, we were all comparing heart stories. <laughs> well, we, we do know. You know, y'all, y'all, Charlie Daniels about to sing himself out, so I didn't get to tell mine. <laughs> Did you, yeah, but you have, you're not in the Heart Attack Club. I'm not in the Heart Sorry. Attack Club. Thank goodness. Yeah. One time. Try when to I was, stay that way. When I was at UL, I did morning radio, and so... Uh, I would wake up, do that, go to class and whatever. It would be, <laughs> yeah. I know it's surprising to look at me today, but it would be until like one o'clock in the afternoon before I would put anything in my mouth because I was not good. whatever. Ooh, not so good. one day, I, I, I kid you not, I was at the conference center in a class, all of a sudden had this crazy chest pain, like enough that made me sure. think I got to go to the hospital. I went there. They did all the tests. Everything was normal. Mm-hmm. And the doctor comes in and says, what have you eaten today? And I'm like, haven't eaten anything today. I go to work at 5 a.m., whatever. Right. He was like, it's heartburn. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> all right. So now I know. if it, The first sign of that kind of stuff, you know, for me <laughs> at least. The eating thing kind of is good. It is, in a way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it just can't be right to bring me three times a day, uh, you know. Uh, so we do have a smoking ban now. August 1st, uh, it looks like is when it will take effect. A lot of people on different sides of this issue. Do you do it to protect the workers or do you let the businesses decide I can almost guess where you guys are on this issue, but now it's it seems to be the law. Waiting on the signature from Joel Robodeau. Carol, what are your thoughts on it? Well, you know, Rob, you can never have enough mandates on business. I mean, you just can't have enough of them. Let's just keep working and see how we can drive them all out. Look, I understand it's a health issue. I don't smoke. I'm vehemently against smoking. Uh, but I do think uh, you know, business owners should have a choice. And, you know, there are enough Restaurants and bars in restaurants that in Lafayette Parish that don't allow smoking, that I think people can find a job in their industry. Uh, another mandate coming down, I, I just I have a problem with that. I really do. Um, I, I do get both sides of it, I, and that's where the, the, you know, the, the real dichotomy comes in because it, it's hard to say, you know, you have to work in a, in a smoking environment, or it's, but it's also hard to tell a business owner, this is how you have to run your business. And it goes on and on and on. We have so many mandates right now. People are educated now about not smoking. Most bars uh, have designated, most places have designated, if they're allowed to smoke, they have designated smoking areas. And many businesses have chosen, chosen to be smoke free. That's a good thing. You know, now you have certain mandates on businesses other than restaurants where they have to go and smoke 25 feet away from the front door. And, you know, uh, some of these businesses, you see office people out, you know, out, yep. out outside in the rain and in the, in the weather, whatever. I, I, I understand it's a it's a terrible addiction. It really is. It's one of the worst addictions there is. It's the hardest to quit. I quit twice a long time ago. So I totally understand that. But again, another mandate, but it was predictable. You knew this council was going to do it. You just you just knew in your bones they were going to do it. You know, the funny thing is living in Dallas and Atlanta, where it has always, not always, but this, this kind of stuff has been put into place a long time ago. It's so inconvenient. I told Bernie I can think of four people I knew in both of the, like, total, that smoked because it's so inconvenient. You know what I mean? If you have to walk, if you work at a hospital, and you have to walk the across the street. That's or how you the marketplace decides. And you know it's a health issue, so you're going to quit. But... To to put another mandate on business, here we go. Warren? I completely agree with the part about putting a mandate on business and such stuff as that, that, that you know, we still should have something in this country called freedom, and, <laughs> and you're, you're free to choose and free to associate and all those kind of such things, and that, um, you know, that, that when you do that for the city of Lafayette, that means that the bars on the outside areas, they're going to do whatever they want to do. I would prefer that uh, we don't go into that. I go back to California where a friend of mine worked out there as a bartender. In California, that was a complete statewide ban on smoking in any restaurant, bar establishment, or whatever. And uh, they said that, that uh, people were in there smoking pot all the time. And that was okay in California. But, mm-hmm. you know, to fire up a... A Brown and Williamson Tobacco Company product, or R.J. Reynolds product, and you'd be in handcuffs going to jail. I mean, you know that it's, uh, you know, it, it's just how far are we going to go? Every time we turn around, you know. Of course, now back when Clinton was in office, 
there was this big push coming around to let's do something about coming up with a fat tax. Let's control people's weight. Let's yeah. control mm-hmm. the amount of sugar, the, the fat know, foods, and all that. that. Well, they still do it. They do it in major cities. You see, and, De Blasio and, you know, and, and they, you know, but Bloomberg. it's a little bit different than if you go out there. You know, should we pass a bill that says if you know if you're uh, a certain height, weight, proportional, out of proportion, then you're not allowed to go into these businesses. <laughs> you know, you can't work in there. What's you can't next? do radio. You can't do this. Mm. You can't do that. It would never work here. They'd have no one here. Have you well, seen the boudin spread that happens on Tuesdays and Fridays? Have you what seen did, us? We should be called boudin. You know, there was that. What, there did, was, what did former Senator Phil Graham say one time? America is the only country where the poor people are fat. Yep. <laughs> uh, there was wow. a gentleman pushing for the restaurants to have arms on the chairs. Mm-hmm. You remember that? Not too yeah, long ago, yeah, right yeah. here in Lafayette. So we'll see <laughs> where the council goes on that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we will uh, talk about this, of course, throughout the day and get your thoughts coming up uh, later on in the show on the smoking ban. We will move on to North Korea, the other hot topic. Turns out maybe the Armada was not where we thought it was. Mm. We thought the ships were headed to North Korea. Mm. Turns out it's nowhere near. 722 now at News Talk 96.5 KPL. 726, <laughs> Winging It Wednesday, brought to you by Service Cadillac. You've oh, got to see what they indeed. have on the lot over they there. They have all kinds of great deals, too. I'll tell you this, Bernie. Um, Monday, I got my car washed. It mm-hmm. rained. I didn't go yesterday, but I'm going to go back again today. I know. I know and then, you know, are. I have the milk problem. We're obsessed with it. In my car I know. right now. What are you going to do about that? I think I'm going to go. Um, I, surely there's some sort of dry-ish carpet mm-hmm. shampoo that That's you don't have idea. to really do it. Yeah. And just shampoo. God, I wish we it had was only milk on my carpet to my car. Yeah. I was just looking at that. Yeah. I was like, I gotta, ooh, I gotta I, do something about this. I, I think, uh, you know, it just ha- get a new car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've been talking about Rob about the, that. The trip from Texas this past weekend, apparently a sippy cup, ended up upside down. So now my car smells like a cottage cheese container. Milk. And I just, you know, it's one of the milk was a bad choice. It's like an occupational hazard of being a dad. You know, well, it so kind of anyway. is. So but, look, uh, they can help just, you out over there. You know, if milk spills in your car, just if go that's get the a least of your problems, kiddo. You know, thank you, It could be yeah. so Count many other things on the seat. I'm happy <laughs> yeah, with the That's milk. right. Get a new Cadillac or get you a new Chevy. <laughs> yeah. Go to the go wash. Go, go to the and wash. Then go to the wash right there on a 1212 Ambassador <laughs> there you go. Life is beautiful there. Uh, so let's talk about North Korea. Uh, here's the headline. Aircraft carrier was not sailing to deter, deter North Korea as U.S. officials suggested. Just over a week ago, the White House declared that ordering an American aircraft carrier to the Sea of Japan would send a powerful message to North Korea. Well, it turns out the USS Carl Vinson and three other warships um, were going in a different direction, and they were actually taking part in exercises with the Australian Navy in the Indian Ocean, not anywhere near the Korean Peninsula. I don't know where this is with this whole situation. But that doesn't have anything to do with that. No, no, yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I don't know, you know what it means, but it seems like things are heating up. And North Korea just this morning had a big, uh, big celebration in which one of the videos, propaganda videos they showed at this event, showed uh, you know, missile hitting the U.S. and U.S. burning down and burning mm-hmm. American flags and stuff yeah. like that. So it's just getting kind of weird. Uh, Warren, <laughs> is this something we we really take seriously, or is this really just a facade for this guy? Kim Jong-un. Well, you have to take a lot of things seriously, but, you know, th- this is nothing new from North Korea. They, they, they've been paranoid and crazy for <laughs> decades and <laughs> decades, over so half crazy a century. After all these years. And, uh, you know, and it, it's just more of the same, that if war were to break out with North Korea, especially if they invade South Korea, how long did it take the U.S. forces in the Gulf War to capture Kuwait? The fourth largest standing army in the world was Saddam Hussein's forces that he assembled on the Kuwait border, right? It took, what, 42 hours? Mm -hmm. I believe it was 42 hours from start to actual finish. And I'm going to tell you, if North Korea fools with South Korea, that 42 hours is going to shrink down to about eight hours. And that they will absolutely be obliterated without any firing of nuclear weapons unless they try to fire them. Do we have a nuclear defense shield and all that? you damn right we do. We've got the things all over the world. I mean, you know, you don't think that we're going to be stupid enough and Japan's going to be stupid enough and everybody else 
is to let North Korea develop some kind of a missile system plus nuclear bombs, we think, and not have missiles in there that can shoot them down and take them out of the air, like the Patriot missile and some mm-hmm. of those things. And, I mean, we have got surgical capabilities that we can go in there and put a smart bomb in, what's that guy's name, Kim Un or whatever? Kim Young-un, Young-un, yeah. Kim Young-un. Mm-hmm. Put it in his bed. <laughs> Kim Young-un. In his bed, not not in the bathroom, but 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 put it in the bed. You know, you go back to Gaddafi and Reagan, you know, that when Reagan decided to bomb uh, Gaddafi and them, mm-hmm. They turned around, they called Moscow, they said, we're getting ready to launch our strikes within 24 hours, mm-hmm. get your ships out of the way, get your, <laughs> keep your people off the street. And they said, okay, no problem. And uh, then the, the aides came in there, the intelligence people came in and said, we believe that Gaddafi is in a tent next to the palace. And Reagan says, put one in the tent. And they said, for real? You know, they thought we were just going to scare him, you know, put one in the tent. And so which they did, it didn't kill him, but it did wound him. And, uh, you know, North Korea, I don't, you know, most of these countries are not stupid enough for self-destruction, although some are. And that uh, usually it's whenever they think they're powerful enough to defeat the rest of them is when they'll pull the trigger. But, you know, yeah, we need to take it serious, but we also need to be ready to take care of the problem on a moment's notice. Carol, what's your thoughts? Well, I, you know, when I read about Thad... In the Wall Street Journal, Gerald Seib did a great article. Bernie and I talked about it yesterday afternoon. It made me think of that insurance commercial where the woman named her car Brad. And then she had this terrible accident about Brad. Well, I could see James Mattis saying, I named my missile Thad, Thad. and I'm about to shoot it at that crazy little jerk up in North Korea. (laughs) You know, Thad, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, ground-based system. Now, here's the tricky part. China keeps threatening more sanctions. Well, they keep threatening sanctions on South Korea, which is in the middle of an election right now. Uh, you know, we do have some uh, very high intelligence capabilities. We have some very high missile guide systems over there. We have some very well-trained people over there. Um, on the border uh, with North Korea. Uh, and now now China is really preparing for something serious to happen because they're putting troops on their border with North Korea because they don't want any of those people. Those people will use it every time there's a destabilized thing. The people will use it to get out of North Korea because they know they're in bad shape over there. Aside from all the missile, you know, all the big show of military force that you see, um, the people are starving. They're starving. And any more sanctions as as China has put on them, because I think China takes this seriously, very seriously, that they can't stand. They can't take a, a desta- any more than it is a destabilized North Korea. And they can't take the United States going after North Korea. So they've been fighting. China has really been fighting the deployment of this missile defense system. I, and what triggered this thought, what really made me look into this was I'm thinking, you know, Israel has the Iron Dome. They shoot down, what, 90 rockets a day with that Iron Dome that we help them develop and we help fund. It is an amazing system. So why not just put that into South Korea and Japan if, if he keeps saber rattling with them? Well, this terminal high area, whatever, whatever defense system is just that. The question is, at what point, how far along is it for deployment? Is it ready for deployment? Yeah. Is it there already? And which is why Trump feels pretty uh, safe in doing what he's doing. Um, and and that message, that that hit to Syria, as you all have mentioned, that really was a huge message that this guy is not going to sit back and do, uh, you know, leading from behind or patience or whatever stupid phrase they want to put on what our foreign policy has been because it hasn't worked. So I think they see that he's willing to take action because why? Because North Korea has violated over and over and over. How many times do you let him violate the the missile agreement that he's not going to test these weapons? He's not going to fire these ballistic missiles. He's done it over and over again. So do you want to wait? They go from devices from just nuclear devices to nuclear weapons. How long do you want to wait for that to happen? So I'll tell you what, I would name my missile Thad and send it right, send it right over there if we needed to. <laughs> okay. We're going to get a quick break in right here. Uh, we always take your calls at 232-1542. Become a part of Winging It Wednesday. Your comments coming up next at 734. We're back after this. 738 at KPL, some new criticism yesterday about the Trump family business dealings mixing with government dealings. Is it happening? Um, apparently, there are reports that Ivanka Trump's brand over in China was awarded two very lucrative trademarks or products 
the day after she met up with the Chinese president when he was in town uh, earlier this month or, or last month, you know, the last couple of weeks. Does this pose any problems? Is it any different than what anyone has done before? The question goes to you, Carol. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Well, what's a girl to do? Dropped by Nordstrom and Neiman Marcus and possibly Macy's? She's got to have friends. And by the way, most of her clothing is made in China, so it kind of stands to reason the Chinese would uh, would be very nice to Ms. Trump. Hmm? Aside from that, I think they've had a relationship for a long time, obviously, because the clothing has been made there for quite a while. So um, that does cause a problem when you go against uh, Donald Trump's Buy American policy. However, a lot of his stuff was made in China, too. <laughs> so uh, most apparel, in fact, due to stupid regulations by our Congress over the decades, most apparel and accessories are manufactured in Asia. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. Um, about As of 2015, over 97 percent of the clothing and 98% of the shoes sold in the United States were imported, according to the American, American Apparel and Footwear. Uh, it could become an issue for her. It probably is already. There are people who make a big issue out of it, but I think their prior relationship should have some kind of standing with it and mm-hmm. the fact that she manufactures over there. Can we get those regulations back in line where American manufacturers don't have to go overseas to be able to make uh, lower-cost goods for Americans, that's kind of tough. Do you remember that book that that woman wrote? And uh, it was prominently featured in this area, um, A Year Without uh, Chinese-Made yep. Products. And, yep. I mean, she had a heck of a time mm-hmm. finding anything that was made in the United States. And that goes back to really terrible policies over the years about textiles, about value-added, about all of these things, uh, mandates put on businesses in terms of uh, benefits mm-hmm. uh, that they they are forced to provide workers. They can't do it uh, and and provide a product at a reasonable price that Americans are willing to pay. I mean, th- it can be done, but it's really difficult in this. L- talk about the mandates. Yeah. There you go. You know, I, I sat in on a talk one time that was equating, you know, we talk about dependence on foreign oil yeah. so often about yes. could it be a national security risk, whatever. And his, the whole point, I forget, it was a professor somewhere. His whole point was, what would you do if all of a sudden shipping didn't work? Sh- mm. Actual ships. Ships, yeah, right. The, what are the products you wouldn't have? I mean, you go through stores, especially now, textile now stores. Now, here's the flip know? side of this. As more and more companies go to robotics, you're going to see th- that may bring the prices down because, of course, the robots mm-hmm. don't need time off, don't need insurance benefits. Don't You just need some good and you don't have the people. shipping costs. So you don't maybe have that the shipping costs. So, in. And, and you're seeing that. Look, you know, cr- policies... There is no end of the, the implications from certain policies. Yeah. Look at New York. They put in a free college tuition for families under 100000 Next story you see, uh, one of the colleges there, one of the universities there has laid off all of their cafeteria workers. Why? Because they can't afford it anymore. Well, why can't they afford it? Because they're not charging tuition. Hey, dumb dumb, <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, these are highly educated people that really act in very stupid ways sometimes. Warren? I would follow up what Carol said about the universities and, and Dum Dum that somebody <laughs> said one time. You ever seen a college do anything they didn't screw up? And uh, no, I wouldn't say that. One, well, but. you know, but it, but uh, it, it was a pretty good point. But you know, getting back to Ivanka Trump and China and all that stuff and the business interest. I mean, what what is new? I mean, my God, you look at every administration that comes along and the people go up there, they've got all kind of business ties. They've got investments around the world, across across the board, you name it. You know, you can only go back to the 1960s, and you had something in um, the the construction company in Vietnam. was called RMJ, R, I mean, uh, RMKRBJ, I believe. It stood for Ruth Morrison Knutson, Brown Root, and Jones. Brown Root was a subsidiary of uh, Halliburton. Lady Bird Johnson was a major stakeholder in Halliburton. And uh, at the time that her husband was uh, president of the United States and the chief architect of the uh, debacle in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know, and and that didn't get any real press. I mean, a little bit, but not much. But, you know, there's all these things, the the banking industry, everything, you know, that that, uh, they're all intertwined. You're not going to separate them. And uh, does she have a right to have trademarks? Of course she does. But now I do agree with this. You know, you can't sit up there and say, make America great again, mm-hmm. buy American, buy American, buy American. But now what he's also doing when he does that is he is alienating his own products. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So good. So, I mean, you know, he's right. In, you know, he's not he's not trying to have it both ways. He, you know, he's got products made over there and he's saying, you know, buy American good. He's saying don't buy my stuff. And, um, you know, that that uh, when it comes down to it, the manufacturing stuff, when when, when I go back to Ronald Reagan was on uh, Johnny Carson Tonight Show one time back in the 70s. This was right before he ran in 1980, and he made the statement on there. He said there's 129, I believe was the number he used, separate taxes that are paid on this suit of clothes that I have on. Mm -hmm. You know, that every mm -hmm. time you turn around, that, that we penalize businesses for being in this country. We penalize them. We penalize the workers in the form of an income tax. All of those things are not charged overseas. They have such an mm -hmm. advantage. And so that's why everything flows over there. Plus, well, we have something in Washington called the OPIC, the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, which is actually a part of the World Bank, which is a part of the United States government. And guess what? They will write you insurance against being nationalized if you'll take your company overseas. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, we talked yesterday I heard on the afternoon shows talking about the payroll tax about, you know, that's one that still boggles people's mind. I'm being charged a tax to hire local mm -hmm. people. I mean, you know, to have people on my payroll. Mm -hmm. i got to get a quick break in. Among other things. I mean, yeah. they just tax you coming and going. Yeah. Service Cadillac brings you in at Wednesday each and every day. We'll take some more of your calls. 232-1542 after the break. Stay with So yesterday, as we reported, the... The man who you murdered the old man on, on, and posted the video on Facebook ended up killing himself after a short pursuit with police. Um, pretty strong, but his family had to say that. They said they before he was caught, they forgive him. They don't hold any, any ill will because that's what their dad would tell them to do, which mm -hmm. kind of tells you about what kind of man, man he was. the dad was. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are looking at Facebook and... I have seen some people even suggest that Facebook should get rid of the live feature. Shouldn't have Facebook Live, shouldn't be able to post videos. What responsibility does Facebook have to get this content down? We know that the video of that murder stayed up for about five hours before it was pulled down. Do they have any responsibility? Warren. You know, that's one of those real fine lines. I don't know. I wouldn't say they have any responsibility at all. I mean, you know, you go back to where we have got some responsibility for us. I think that they should not be in the in the business of having to monitor everything that goes on there. That's the NSA's uh, responsibility, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they monitor Wiki everything. Leaks. I was about to say they probably and are. It's WikiLeaks. Well, <laughs> Leave they it do. Up to I mean, you know, they record everything. But, I mean, the deal is they record all the stuff, but it's also illegal for them to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and uh, but, uh, you know, the, all of this stuff, social media, YouTube, and, and all that, where, you know, you can put stuff out there. And you can put stuff out there on your own website. Mm -hmm. If you want to, and uh, just advertise it. So, do they? You know, I would say no, and I hope we don't get to the point to where that we have the the uh, KGB and, and the Gestapo going around checking on everything anybody does, and then who makes the rules? Who says it crosses the line? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to get down to where it crosses the line based on the type of person that you are, or the type of person that that you target, or what you put on there, what you don't put on there. And, um, you know, I just hope that we don't we don't go down that line too far. You know, I think the funny part is if if I were to take a video of this of this conversation we had and in the background, what did we have? Method of Modern Love yeah. coming into this uh -huh. uh, segment. If that song would have been on it, it would have taken 30 seconds for YouTube to identify that and pull it down for copyright reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. And it would be gone forever. No, take the music out. You know, it's just gone. Um I don't know. In I don't, spite I, of the fact that you all pay fees to yep, not for not to for Facebook. all of the licensing, not for we pay a lot of fees. Trust me, not for Facebook though. Well, let me say this about that. This is this is one of those thorny areas that it's a brave new world out there. It's really going to be hard. But I tell you what, Facebook is darn fast when they don't like the content of your ad, and it's a conservative ad, which it has been done to me. And I only used I used a, a, a newspaper story that was hitting Obama's policies. It had no obscenity in it or anything like that. They pulled it down so fast. So they are very selective. If they're going to have a policy, they should have a consistent policy. But what's really troubling is a lot of these things. I mean, you've had suicides 
live stream. Yep. You've had murders, as this one was, live streamed. So at some point, is there a responsibility? I mean, look at the broadcast stations, how long the broadcast, and they still broadcast media, mm-hmm. uh, but operates under certain uh, restrictions yep. under the FCC. Well, I was right? going to say, you know. Uh, not that I think it's that great, because yeah. I think that their policies are very mm-hmm. selective, too. So so Warren's point about you, you let that camel's nose under the tent, and pretty soon you got all the humps under there, too, and and all of that you have to deal with. But I tell you, it is troubling to see some of the things yeah. that do go on. But I'm a free, you know, basically I come down on the side of free speech, let people choose for themselves. 232-1542, your comments And on our this? First Amendment is for the ugly speech as well yeah. as the pretty speech. I was going to say, uh, you know, as... As far as the ethical side of, of to put it, I remember when I worked in Dallas, a guy fell between the outfield, the outfield wall and the stands at Rangers Ballpark. It was about a 20 foot fall. Whoa. He ended up surviving, but went to the hospital. I mean, he survived right then to make it to the hospital, died about five hours later. As soon as he died, an email very calmly went out to the whole newsroom that said, now you're showing the last seconds of someone's life. We are not showing the video anymore. And it was pulled. Yeah. But up to that point, you saw the guy, you know, I mean, right. just seeing the guy fall from there. And I, I see it the same way. There, in the history of the world, suicides, people have gone to the middle of busy streets to do it. That's part of it in, in whatever kind of messed up mind frame you are. That's all Facebook is now, is where everyone is. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not physically somewhere. And it's hard to get away. I mean, there are cameras everywhere. It's hard everywhere. to get away from Everybody it. in the world has yeah. a phone. Look at that guy being dragged down the aisle. You think 20 years ago? Anybody would have known, really known about that because 20 years ago, the prevalence of cameras that could yeah. take pictures like and videos like that. It is an interesting, interesting. We live in a brave new world, and they're going to be. Ha- and I don't know that the human mind has kept up with the technology or or the ethics, the ethical considerations. It's tough. But the number it's, of puppy videos and, and cat videos, videos. <laughs> outnumber. Murders yeah. on camera, yeah. millions to one. Pictures and, and pictures, goats. pictures and of goat, goats, goat yes. yoga. Goat yoga <laughs> goat is yoga. the hot thing yeah, now. So are goat you, is that something you're going to bring to no, uh, the city club? No, 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 we don't let pets inside the, <laughs> inside the know, yoga studio. What about unicorn yoga? <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, well, snowflakes and unicorns, we don't know. You know, they, know about that. <laughs> unicorn you know, did you frappe. See the, did you see I the, mean, uh, frappuccino. Frappuccino. Did you see the goat yoga story where you, the part of it is not that the goats are just there. It's that while you're You know how that started? The goats climb on you. You know how that started? From a kid's birthday party at this woman's farm. She always loved goats, so she had goats out there. And some of the women were there, and they started mm. playing with the goats. And I don't know how exactly it evolved, but now she has a waiting list for people to get into her goat yoga sessions hey, man. at the farm. I mean, it's just crazy. There's something weird for everybody. That, <laughs> and, and there's <laughs> weed yoga and nude yoga, which, ugh. Okay, if y'all, I don't if, even want to think about down dog. Okay, if y'all want to pay me. <laughs> If y'all want to pay me to step on your back while you do yoga, it's fifty dollars an hour. Okay? All right, mm-hmm. seven fifty-five. Service you. Chevrolet Cadillac brings us Winging It Wednesday every single week. And, we and, never know quite where the conversation is going to go. And that's on the that note, of, yeah, on that note, people, right. that's why you join us. By the way, join us on the Ross Report this afternoon. We will be doing the ins and outs of the school board tax. Been promising that ah, for a week. Okay. And uh, have you we know. got anyone from the school board? Who's willing well, to I'm going to call anybody to come come on and talk about it. I, I, the school board president can come talk about it, et cetera, if they want to. You okay. know, yeah, we, we'll get anybody on. And that's why we've been promoting this for a few days now, for people to come on and talk about the other side. Uh, but I can tell you, if you look at the, the Facebook, and now having social media makes it a lot less expensive to promote ideas like this, which is, mm-hmm. real, that's really the good thing. Anybody can get in on the online conversation I'll tell you, the one as well thing as on air. Has, and, and we're kind of running out of time. The one thing that has struck me as odd about this thing is that everywhere I look, I'm seeing one Acadiana supporting this. I'm, I'm confused at, as to what their benefit in it, because they're about bringing business here. Well, their contention is that without a good educational system, you can't attract uh, businesses. Mm-hmm. But, but I think that buildings do not make an educational system. And the, the gains that you've seen in the school system over the years have been in spite of those buildings. But the money has been coming in. The school board could have been replacing those buildings. And I'll just give you a teaser. You know, many people are saying, well, that, you know, there's a problem with school boards in the past. This school board has shown some colossally bad judgment. First of all, they cut down the uh, input from the public. 
They have one meeting a month. They cram a bunch of issues into that one meeting. They do everything by committee. They should be functioning as a committee of the whole with more input from the public, not less. The only time they want our input is when they want our money. That's number one. Number two, they built a 70, over $70 million high school uh, that's not needed based on s- student census and population in this parish. They floated over a $120 million bond issue. Now, they're doing some good things with Milton Elementary, Green Tea Lind, and some of the uh, peripheral, the other issues. The elementary schools are the ones that need the help. New high school was really not needed if you base it on student population. The, the, census, the student census in Lafayette Parish schools has gone down, actually by just a few hundred or a thousand. I mean, there's no more. there are no more students than there were 20 years ago. More of the conversation to come this afternoon on the Stay Ross tuned. Report starting at 2 o'clock. And anyone with insight that yeah. works for the school board, Absolutely. you don't have to give your name. Any insight we get on Rob, this Rob, you is wouldn't great. believe the number of emails that I'm getting from teachers yeah. who see the waste from the inside. I mean, tragic stories. All right, 232-1542 is her number two. This afternoon, starting at 2, 2 to 4, the Ross Report with Carol Ross right here on News Talk 96.5 KPL. Coming up after the top of the hour, more follow-up on last night's smoking ban approval of an ordinance by the Lafayette Consolidated Government Council. Stay with us. We're back after this. It is 7.58.